subject is going to be a poppy. They are starting to come out in abundance here and they are a beautiful, beautiful flower. So delicate, luminous in our super sunshine and very fragile but such brilliancy in their colours and the, the, the petals are almost like tissue paper aren't they? So I'm going to do a quick poppy and the reason I'm doing quite a few quick paintings is because I believe it really benefits you in actually painting. Too often we overthink things and we're too cautious. So by doing this quickly, I think it's a really good thing for you to do to, to get moving forward. Now, I've mixed a, almost an orangey colour with a cadmium yellow and a scarlet because what I want to do is I am going to be layering to an extent but um, I've started off by putting some masking fluid on there for the center of the poppy and all the little seeds for those of you who aren't familiar with it um, this is masking fluid this is my favored my preferred as they say um, brand it's Sennelier uh, drawing gum they call it here and the nice thing about this container is that it has a very very fine little uh, where are you? Whoops, wire nozzle. Okay, can you see that? So just make sure that you do put the stopper back in, the wire that goes in the little tiny, tiny little hole. Just bear with me while I do it because if you don't, you might get it all dried up. If you're using one of these, do resist shaking the bottle because then you'll get air bubbles in and it'll just spurt out. And when you use it, just let gravity take the fluid out of the nozzle. Okay, so let's get started. I will have to piece this together because of drying time, but I'm going to start off with, I'm going to make this quite big so you can see what's going on, uh, just a number eight brush. And I've got a petal here, which is sort of split. I am working from a photograph, um, which is on my computer. I don't like to pick wildflowers. I think it's such a shame. Um, but there's so many out now looking absolutely wonderful. I might have to break my rule and paint a bunch. Okay, so just adding water because I don't want that hard line to spoil. Um, again, it's very wet, very loose. One of my American friends thinks that's a very strange expression. Um, we won't go into that. That petal actually comes further down here like that and that one there okay and then I've got like um because I'm looking down into it so we'll start to see the underneath of that leaf but this is just to get the first layer on so those are the inside petals and then behind I have a petal coming up here and coming down like that Again, just bring the colour down. Don't worry about the odd bits where you haven't got colour. That can all be dealt with at a later stay, stage. And there's another one there. Then there's a, one here, which is very, very raggedy. With a lovely, uh, it's a separate one there. See how quickly I'm moving that colour about because those colours, the ca cadmium, will stain and leave a mark and then another petal here I'll plonk a bit more colour in there we go let it run around let it play and we've got another one like that and then there's another little one something like that and a bit more water <clears throat> this petal needs to be a lot bigger, I have just noticed. Just pull that out. There we go. Okay, now this is drying quite quickly there. Now, I'm now going to add more red to my orange mix. And I'm going to go in... Uh, no, not there. 
I'm going to come in here and just let some of the colour come down. Because there is, the, the, if you look closely, as I always advise, always look closely at your subject, even if you're going to do a very quick watercolour sketch from, from your memory, um, so you can have a look and see what's going on. So it is like tissue paper, although it's soft and more like a, a plasticky feel. These are the petals I'm talking about. Um, they do have sort of ridges. This is why I wanted to start off with a lighter colour for the ridges which are catching the light. Um, I'm going to come... no, not yet. Again, think about the drying cycle. I talk about this with lots of paintings. You know, how wet is the paint? Do you want to put your other layer on yet? Or do you want to wait a bit longer? Now, this one is going to have quite a bit of dark shadow down there because that, that leaf is curling that way. Okay, oops, I better deal with that before that dries off. So we want to create that sort of thing there. Okay, now we can put a bit in here. Oops, missed a bit there. It probably looks like a bit of nothing special at the moment, but give it time. Right, more, back to more red to add to the mix I'd already made. Yeah, that's better. Now, yeah. This is the petal that is curling up. So we're going to give it an edge. In fact, it can't go beyond the little seed heads because then it wouldn't make sense. So that's curling round like that. Now, this is darker in here. Just encourage it out and we can go a lot of this is quite black in the bottom but I'm just going to put some red in there just to so it will all join together so to speak right I want a darker red line there And of course you can always adjust the shape. I'm going to go in darker there when it's a bit dry. I'm going to have to have a little drying stage. I'm really getting red there. Leaving that little white line there so it doesn't all merge in one one togetherness mass. See the colours bleeding out nicely and we can just encourage it here and there. And the same up here. I've added a lot more red to that mix now. and over here. And over here. Okay, so you're starting to get the shape now. Um, this is actually, I'm gonna just dab out a little bit round here because I think I've lost the curve. This petal is coming up like that. 
this petal is stuck in there and it's coming back like that but that will become clearer when I get more colour on so I've just decided to lift a little bit out of that because of how the light is hitting it and I'm going to lift a little bit out of that because how the light is hitting it okay remember you can make adjustments and using this kitchen roll I can drag it so I get this papery effect might tidy that up and use that mark actually along there okay right I need to let that dry I'm gonna have a cup of coffee and you can do likewise I'll be with you in a minute joining this right, up. Well, that's dried off I've just been softening off a few edges and I want to just make that edge a bit a bit tidier I suppose Right, now I'm going to go in and make um, a bit of darkness in here. So I'm taking the same red that I got, but I'm adding a bit of Payne's Grey, just to give us a bit of shadow in there and filling in that white gap at the same time. That's not quite strong enough, so let's just get a bit more on my palette. Is that too dark? Oh, we'll soon find out. No, I think that's okay. Okay, so just gently going around there. Rinsing the brush off a little bit. Dabbing it on the, the paper so it's not so wet. And just pulling that out a little bit. Because you've got these grooves uh, you know, in the in the the petal, these sort of crinkles. Yeah, crinkles. That's a good word. Okay, that's lovely. And uh, while I'm doing that, while I've got that colour about, I'm going to go in here as well. So I've just used the the scarlet red with a bit of Payne's grey. Just pull it out a little bit. Get that shadow in. Now I'm going to do the same over here. Again I'm not too worried about the odd white bit. I just want a happy bright little painting. And a bit more just in places around here. So it's, separ it's separating the petals a bit more. And actually this one is a bit darker, I want a bit more red on that one. Now I'm going to go back onto these petals round the back. I'm just letting that dry off a bit before I fiddle with it. And I want more red now on these at the top. I'm using a Scarlet, Scarlet Lake, I think. Whatever you've got that's nearest the colour. And just coming in and just dragging it in. Now there's a, there's a dark shadowy bit in there, so while that is still damp, I'm going to just drop a bit of that shadowy colour because we've got all this area around this actually is all very dark as well around the seed head and the little oh I'm forgetting my botanical terms are they the stamens okay and I want to come out here while that's still damp that's curling in so that's in shadow just rinse my brush off a bit and just have a bit of bit of blending going on. Don't want it to get too muddy. I want it to remain bright, but at the same time we've got to make some. Now I've got a neighbour in the street who's decided to shout at somebody. So if you hear that, you'll just have to uh, excuse it. Just 
go down to the boulangerie for their bread. Just taking a little bit off there because that is curving in the other way. Right, now let's soften that off a little bit. Oh, that's coming along quite nicely. I want more of this red over here. And over here. So just piling on the colour. As always, I'll smudge that bit there, never mind. As always, start light and build up the colour. Okay, now I am going to do some more bit of shadow round here. And I'll have to come back to that when that's dried off because that is where the inside is. The petal is curled back up. Okay, I'm going to just put a little bit of this um, seed head. It's a sort of paley yellowy green. Uh, we've got to go back with that with a a fine a fine brush probably. Okay, good. I'm going to let that dry off and I'll come back to it and hopefully finish it at the next stage. Welcome back. Well, that stage has dried off. And I've suddenly decided to put a background in. I know I haven't bothered much with these quick little um, paintings, but this time I'm going to. So what I've done is I've taken a piece of tracing paper, traced off the image. Try and find how this goes back on there. Ooh. No, it's that way. That's it. Traced off the image. <laughs> Um, I've cut it out. Now I'm going to do it at this stage because it will in fact be held down by the masking fluid which is still quite tacky. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a very vague sort of out of focus background. So I'm going to wet and I've got some yellow on my brush already. I'm going to be a bit careful how I get up to the edge. Okay. But we're going to have other colours on here. So this is sort of like the um, the grass and the other flowers behind. I'm starting with this yellow because it was a sunny day and the grass is all new and spring-like and fresh. So let's just have a bit more there. The um, tracing paper was rolled that way. So fortunately it's curling down. So just, just remember that. All these little things to think of. Anyway, hopefully this is going to be a nice new learning for you. Just whack it on there, okay. Getting up to the edge as much as possible. Probably could have used a bigger brush. Ooh. Doesn't matter. Okay, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go in with some greens while it's still wet. That's why you want your tracing paper to keep it off your flower or a mask of some sort. If I peel that off as soon as I've done this, any bit that's escaped underneath, then we can deal with that then. Right, now I want to go in a bit darker down here. So let's get some darker colours, whack it in, move it around a bit. Let's make an idea of some leaves and stalks coming up. Just don't stay down there, please. So we want a really nice out of focus. Let's keep that bit light, shall we? Okay, now I've just added a bit more sap green onto my brush. 
and just going into this wet area. I hope you can see that's from my arm in the way. We will have a stalk coming down from this, so let's let's start that. Whoops. And look, you can just crisscross because you've got blades of all sorts of things going on there. And I think we are going to need to go a bit darker under here, but I'm leaving I'm leaving a white edge. A white edge there. Just to so I'm not I can do that by carefully with my brush to go up to the edge of the edge of the poppy. Sorry, I'll leave some sentences hanging up in the air, don't I? Sorry about that. Right, let's mix a bit more of a nice limey greeny colour. And it doesn't matter, it's just to give us a little bit of background. And if we have some blobs of yellows of flowers. I'm not going to mix any more though. We could have blue flowers and red flowers and all sorts, but I'm going to leave it. I think I'm going to leave it at that. Let's just smudge that, run that out a little bit. Now, I'm going to take that off straight away because I want to see if anything's escaped underneath. Eee, it's pulling my masking fluid off. No, it hasn't. Lovely. And what I'm going to do oh, is just a little bit there. It's not crucial though. There we go. Right. I'm just going to go in, dry that brush off a little bit, and still keeping it nice and bright, just going in there, just to take it up to the flower. So it doesn't look as if you've put the mask over it and painted onto it. Okay, that's fine. And now I'm going in with a darker green. I'm going to pull this stem out and I'm going to put a few more stems and we're going to have a, a poppy head there maybe and a poppy head there and one there and some bigger leaves. Right, okay, that will do for the background for now. Now, this is all dry up here. Remember, when you're rubbing masking fluid off, it must be bone dry and your hands must be dry. Otherwise, if you're not careful, if you've got damp hands or they're a bit warm, it might rub off your paint. Now I can go in with more intense colour. I can make the shape in the middle. Let's get this off. This has been on, it was on since yesterday. Um, as I say, I think it's always best to get your masking fluid off as quickly as you can. There's a question a student raised and I did a little experiment. You'll find it on one of my courses somewhere. Right, is that everything? Uh, you can sooner feel if you rub your finger over. Okay, good. Now, I am now going to go in and do more red. more red and I'm going to put it here so we can see the edge of that petal a bit better okay and don't forget we've got these sort of crinkly you use your finger you know anything works doesn't it these crinkly bits Okay. 
and I need to do a little bit more on this leaf to make it look as if it's curved round. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go in with this dark, this is the red with a bit of Payne's Grey. That curve a bit more. Now see how I'm using the brush. Most of the pigment of the darkness is in the tip. Right, now we need to look at these little yellow thingies. So I'm just going to drop some of the limey green in. And I'm not bothered if they're not all covered because you've got highlights on some of them, the way they're catching the light. And it's pretty dark round there, but what I'm going to do this will please, oh look that's bled into that, that's nice, do I want that? No, I don't think I do. Okay, um, tiny brush, I'm going in to do a bit of shape on this centrepiece. Because this will help to tell us which way the poppy is tilting. Okay, and then in here we're very dark, so I'm going to the Payne's Grey with some red. And I'm going to just, and I'm going to let some of that bleed into those little green thingies, the little seed. Well, this is the seed head, isn't it? But those are the lovely pollen stamens that attract all the insects. And they come along and fill up their pollen bags or whatever they've got. Okay, that one's a bit darker. And coming out, just doing some wiggly lines really, to come out into in between. And I do want a few bits of really dark. Right, where are we now? I don't think we want to do much more. As I say, I just wanted it to be a fun little little painting. And having said I won't be splattering any reds or anything round there, I think I've changed my mind. So let's go for it. And I'm just going to put a little bit of a darker green under here. Just so we can see that there is a shadow behind. And just a little bit more.
danger of overworking that now. So there we go, there's a little poppy for you. A very loose and wet one. I'll just tidy that up and I'll put the film together and I hope you enjoyed that.